Hello guys and welcome to our channel. This is Baby Roll. In today's video, we are talking about Spectre, the new thief specialization for End of Dragon. And this one is quite a success from Ariane. It, it should some attention to details. It stay feel like a thief, even so it plays a bit like a necro. So it feel like completely fresh and new style. And it is the first ever elite specialization to come with a single target uh, support with targeting allies mechanic. So it is really, really something new and fresh. That however came with some difficulties around it, like how to target allies to begin with, it's pretty difficult mechanic in guild wars now um, and not much options for it, but I think Arianet will probably uh, fix that on release and have different options uh, from the targeting systems and mechanics, the options for the game in general, so I um, don't think this will be an actual problem in the game for support. And whether or not it will be seeing much of a play by the community or meta as a support, this is something I guess the community will decide. But for sure, it can do a lot of support in PvP or World vs. World, and do roaming and stuff like that. So uh, it has potential, it has a lot of build craft. You're not locked as much. You can play it for power, condition, and support in combative moods. I don't think it will see much power play uh, in PvE, maybe condition condition and support because the trades himself and inspector are split into three categories basically it's either supporting your own status through more healing power or through direct damage through torment and filling shroud faster expertise gain this thing will have you be stronger either in condition or a bit of healing and this middle line will always grant you some self survivability so you access shroud to avoid lethal damage you would have more shroud gain uh, through siphon and granting a better barrier and this one is great for condition cleanse and can see a huge play in combative modes because it work even without tethered allies and with a rune like antitoxin it will become two conditions per second which even show you this idea of better options always with see if you would go signets and stuff like that you can actually play without something like um, shadow step it, it offered value that didn't exist before and the last trait is basically focused more on healing. This one was healing and granting barrier and deviant shroud. And this one's healing through shadow stepping and making well grant uh, alacrity. And this um, put more in support also by making siphon grant barrier to the ally you tethered and potential for revive. So the last tier is all for supporting granting barrier to allies and can benefit you some of them like this one and the first tier in granting basically more stats the middle one is basically for survival but nothing in them for power you can support your healing power torment damage uh, expertise you can uh, give yourself better survivability condition cleanse there is nothing with support power play that doesn't matter in combative mood since you would play for the mechanic for the defense of shroud for uh, the movement through the wells uh, this weapon itself if you want it like this hit do really significant power damage but the first two one not but blame for condition and blame for support makes more sense in bve so i'm not sure it's gonna see bar play in bve honestly but it has some options some decent option the skills the new skills are filling a role that's actually really good and i like the way they look i think they are some of the prettiest skill we have gotten in this expansion actually the symbols the coloring the shadows moving it look nice and the idea of teleporting too much is giving you this feel of um, actual thief so the wheels feel really unique playing them with a the thief and giving you mobility that you can see it happening so it doesn't really creep the mobility that we used to do uh, or used to see from most thief specializations like the immediate shadow step and stuff like that so it feel really nice it's strong but kind of balanced as the skill type and some of the details attention that showed from arena it comes with the shadow mechanic as you see the numbers here are really good because it's 150 of your health thieves technically have low health pool so if the shroud is like only 70 percent or something you're gonna be like 7k or 8k this is like couple of hits and over especially if you're glassy playing but 150 you can tank in it you can survive in it for long you have time enough to brace your skills especially if you're glass built and not only that the new siphon skill that uh, basically the new steel can work inside the shroud itself so you can fill it more and more and more even side shroud imagine druid ranger can do that and refill his avatar inside that would be insane and it draws a lot in design element not just from necromancer i would say from the harbinger itself so the shroud it have a skill 3 mobility just like the harbinger and in harbinger it apply torment this one apply fear and barrier at the end 
and total of two CCs. This one and this one was a stun and stability, the big CC one, like the float in Harbinger. Different position, different mobility. Harbinger have two skills for mobility, for example, not just one, but it feels the same. It do torment auto attack. Those two skills uh, hit quite nicely for di different targets, and it apply chill, weakness, poison. It feel like a good kit overall through CC, stability, uh, barrier access, uh, movement in bearing conditions like chill, weakness, and access to different condition also like the poison and torment and cripple. So you would have the advantage in mobility if you ask me in uh, in a normal fight. And the shroud itself will tank for you. Not only that, they mature it will last for a long time because the shroud degrade on only 2% right now, not 3% like necro not five like creeper only two percent i'm not sure if this number is going to continue um on release but it feels good uh, it makes you feel like you really need to focus the support like always kill the thief first at this point if you're in rooming or something like that as long as the thief support at least and i quite enjoyed the new scepter even so it's a single target it doesn't have much bar damage except for skill three which can do some decent damage but it is really good with condition uh, some boon access even control for condition himself weakness access chill access it it feel nice to play with but however i hate the way it sounds right now it's almost really really difficult to play this class for a long time without like having your head hurts even staying next to them for a long time just annoying so i hope they will change the sound or remove it or give an option to shut it off at least so now let's talk about the bve build i'm running for it which really really good build i enjoyed it this thing can do anything it wants basically so i'm running full trailblazer everything my trinkets my weapons everything except like one dire so i wouldn't get poison over 100 percent but everything is straight blazer i'm using the rune of the undead and on my scepter dagger setup and dagger dagger setup so one for melee for condition and one for range i use sigil of bursting and sigil of agony to get my um, bleed duration a bit higher you don't have to go sigil of bursting you can do malice and go for a bit more dire so it's not really hard on stone but i like blend this way uh, to focus more on damage but i guess you can get a bit higher uh, duration for torment and changing like that and for weapon choices i use scepter dagger and dagger dagger and since i'm using dagger only in the offhand i only put one here so it has some similarity in blend this way with soul beast uh, condition since the auto attack will do bleeding and poisoning in the chain obviously the stealth skill is pointless to us since it's a power attack and skill 3 will do bleed with a dodge over every enemy in the area like five targets here and from the traits it will apply poison also two stacks of poison and the other setup we have scepter having torment from auto attack projectile single target and this one doesn't do condition but you can grant yourself some boons you can apply weakness but this one is the monster for damage from traits it will put two stacks of poison and it's already do three stacks of torment one stack of poison and one stack of chill so you'll end up putting three stacks of poison three stacks of torment and chill every time you hit it it is technically double hits as you see and will keep applying this um, amount of damage but the first hit is a really slow projectile and the second hit is another projectile that make it move faster which is a really weird thing so if you don't apply the two projectile and cancel it you will only apply the first one and like that you will have this slow projectile moving and it will not apply the torment the torment happened from the second projectile only so as you see here i cancelled it and i have only the slow projectile it will apply poison and chill only but if i have it both projectile i will apply the torment the other two skills this one cost too much initiative comparing to the low damage but at least it can bounce so it might find play from you but as you see this one damage is so high so as long at least are you finding single target or you're cleaving with other skills like the utility you don't really need to use it the stealth would get you to apply multiple hits through the auto attacks but it costs a lot of initiative also so i found myself most of the time not using the offhand i'm only having dagger to get access to the dual uh, wielding skill my options here uh, is tricks for healing and stun break and the remove condition since i'm going with supporting tricks they're both dodges on really low cooldown and like i said remove condition and this one will grant you initiative so it will help you even spam your damage a little bit more and to cleave and like attack multiple targets in bv in general killing everything fast I use preparation thousand needle that will apply um, this skill after about three seconds of casting and you can use it to hit everything and I use this well for condition well 
of sword and however this will to apply the most damage you need your enemy to not have the conditions to begin with it is good since it will apply for every enemy in the area so if you've been single target at least it will apply the strong one to the rest if you're not really applying hitting everything with torment but uh, at the start of the fight at least use it before you use at least the preparation so it will apply first a stack of poison two stacks of bleed two stacks of torment and since every condition is already applied it will apply one stack of torment for the rest of the impacts which basically other two but if you use preparation first preparation would apply the poison and the bleed so once you use this one it will apply only two stacks of torment and then keep applying only single stack so start with it not with the preparation when you're trying to engage uh, just to get your damage a bit higher for the elite a lot of things can work the new will give quality of life even on a longer cooldown it break defense bar magnificently fast and it will group up the mobs for you to cleave them in a small area just in front of you and you can also use Sieve Guild to just tank through champions and stuff and just go faster and not use your elite most of the time. And you can use even Dagger Storm just for more um, survivability condition cleanse and it will apply some decent damage. But most of the time I find myself go with Shadowfall probably. Now for the Shroud itself, the new Siphon skill do really good damage since we are training to do Poison and Bleed and grant us initiative and it grant slow by default. So it do some really decent chunk of damage at the start. And for Shroud, it's our way to hit multiple targets. So if you have multiple targets in front of you, you would hit three targets in a radius of 180, basically like a decent melee radius. And it's range, so it can hit from 900 range also. It's a projectile based. It apply torment and give might. The second one will cleanse condition and apply torment and cripple. So it's a good secondary condition cleansing access besides the tricks. This one is a mobility that will apply the fear at the end of the movement, but for a really large radius. So it's easy to land, but if you're simply at the front of your enemy, it will not. As you see, I move like that. It doesn't get fear, obviously, because it happened in a big area around me. Now, this one is really good for both power and condition damage. It applies some decent poison, weakness, and chill, and really strong uh, power damage. And the last one is your big CC and to reward you with stability also. So it feels nice overall and give you mobility and you can tank really really good inside it. Now for the traits, I go with Deadly Arts, Trickery and Spectre. In Deadly Arts we get a lot of our condition damage, we apply poison on steel and on down state skills and we get every trait from this uh, line to apply two stacks of poison we increase the damage and duration of poison uh, so you apply extra stack basically and you increase the damage and duration of poison it become really really strong you apply weakness repetitively this trait is for power so it doesn't mean much for us and you get extra condition damage and every dual attack as we explained with this one and with this one would apply uh, poison since we're getting two stacks then it's two stacks of poison so this one would apply bleed and poison and this one would apply extra two stacks of poison so it's three three torment and one chill and this trait making you in a 20 second cooldown if you hit an enemy lower than 50 percent immobilize him and if you immobilize an enemy you would apply poison so technically for us it will happen when the health start dropping and will happen through the preparation skill since it will apply poison because of the immobilization now for trickery itself we get extra initiative when we steal so we can spam a lot of our hits more and we get extra expertise and extra condition damage per stack up to 15% condition damage now for our options we put bleed on dodge uh, on three targets around us in a really small radius but it is nice when you keep moving uh, around your targets it, it do some extra decent damage we can go with the boons technically uh, if you want like it's not mandatory because this thing is not easy to land and you don't really depend on it this much we take a uh, trickster so we can remove conditions and lower the cooldown of those two skills which really nice as a condition removal source we also have extra bleed damage by 25 percent and we have our steel which basically siphon now applies three stacks of bleed so now it applies three stacks of bleed from here and three stacks of poison from this trait now for spectre itself in order to make this build have the damage the tankness and everything i go with consume shadows every time i will leave my shroud i will consume all the shroud life that i have to heal and whatever rest will be barrier 
So most of the time I will not be access and shroud in hard fights like solo and champion or something like that except to do some few CC applying some damage and I will leave the shroud once I want to consume the rest for healing. So I won't engage with shroud, I would wait till I have enough damage to my health to heal through shroud. I would tank few and then like and have shroud or whatever I think I need I will leave to get healing and some barrier through this method and then start buying my skills I have a lot of initiative and initiative regain and I can fill shroud faster through kiting and range just moving a bit around you fill shroud again and you can access it and keep using the same method applying your skills fast and leave immediately and uh, this trait granted us a shroud gain higher because every time we apply torment and we can do torment through the auto attack and this skill also apply torment so we can do a lot of torment and keep gaining life force faster and torment damage is increased by 20 percent the last trait reduce the damage of our enemy by two percent for every condition on them and we can apply torment bleed poison almost permanent shell we have a long time of uh, slow we can put some immobilize like we have a lot of conditions so we can lower the damage quite significantly we gain expertise from vitality by 13 percent and the rot wallow buff not really matter to us since we are technically solo players this trait is about throat wallow uh, venom and it doesn't really matter to our solo play but this one will grant us barrier every time we attack with a stealth attack so we explained that the dagger stealth attack is not worth uh, anything obviously but on scepter you can stealth and do that just for survivability if you want to reposition if you, there is a lot of enemy on you and you keep getting chills or something you can simply go stealth like that reposition and immediately go stealth attack in order to apply uh, barrier even for high survivability and then spam your hits you can get in shroud but this method not really necessary since you have already too much survivability so investing in stealth attack didn't feel rewarding this much for this thief so once you go to shroud you can use auto attack as much as you want skill 2 is really decent damage and skill 4 you can give yourself stability or something and you can even reposition it through this skill to apply both the stun and fear but one of them will ride the other you would have to have really good timing with this so you would do that you would move here you would apply the fear and then the stun would land something like that and you would leave and gain barrier really high and heal yourself and then immediately siphon so try to keep siphon out and spam skills 3 some of the initiative you would gain them easily and you can access shroud again and you can leave shroud for more barrier and then you can uh, spam your hits again you can heal and dodge reposition that's basically the build and i'm gonna leave you with some footage playing it i hope you enjoy the video don't forget to like and subscribe i'll be seeing you next time peace